A dry erase board can be a space to outline an assignment, advertise an event, or take a study break to draw or doodle. Even in an era full of technology, these non-digital objects remain so popular with students in UT's Hodges Library that they've used the existing whiteboards to request more, which is a request that the library has honored. In spring 2015, along with my research partner, Sojourner Cunningham, who is now social science and assessment librarian at the University of Richmond, I embarked on a non-traditional assessment project to harness the popularity of these whiteboards and to learn more about our student population by hearing from students in their own words. Sojourner and I wanted to counteract survey fatigue after several recent projects raised questions that were difficult to answer due to the limitations of our methodology. We sought a different approach to our research that would allow us to hear from students in their own words and share responses in real time. We were particularly interested in students' use of library space and how students create informal learning communities in these spaces. In a newly created role as a student success librarian, I also better wanted to understand the concept of student success. My role had familiarized me with campus conversations regarding retention and graduation, but I was curious about students' own perspectives and how they could add to the university's dialogue. So with these interests in mind, we developed a list of open-ended questions related to four broad categories. We purposefully did not include a library-specific category, and in fact, 20 of our 30 final question prompts did not include the word library at all. We sought to make our project participatory on multiple levels. After we developed our initial list of questions, we invited input from others across the library, including faculty and staff who work with students in varied capacities. Their input informed both our whiteboard content and our wording, as well as our locations. The three whiteboard locations we selected in Hanja's library were a quiet study floor, the studio, which is a collaborative learning space in the commons, and a main entranceway outside of the ever popular Starbucks and our circulation desk. For 30 consecutive days, we wrote a question, kept it up for 24 hours, and then photographed and erased it. In spring 2016, we launched a second iteration. We added the University of Richmond's Boatwright Memorial Library as a second study site, moved one Hodges board to better align with Richmond's library spaces, and posted, white, posted questions once weekly for eight weeks, rather than daily, to avoid whiteboard fatigue for our students and ourselves. From these two study periods, we collected more than 2,100 responses, which included text, symbols, emojis, and doodles. And then came the fun of transcription and coding. Student assistants conducted a first round of each to help mitigate our closeness to the project. To code our 2,100 responses, we developed a homegrown system of 20 categories listed here. And while I could talk about what interests me from our findings for the rest of the night, in the interest of time, I'd like to ins instead share just a few things we found notable related to spaces, learning communities, student success, and campus culture. First, spaces. We had anticipated that the board outside of Starbucks would be the least used because it was in the most public and transitional space. Instead, it was by far the most popular. It had 66% it had of responses in 2015 and 72% in 2016. At one point, students even stopped me as I was writing on the board so that they could continue to read the day's responses. This finding led us to consider the impact of placement. We wondered whether students saw this board as different from other library spaces and thus responded differently. And we're curious about other opportunities to better utilize transitional spaces like it to conduct research and to kindle conversation. Next, learning communities. More than 10% of our responses were a response to another response and not the original question. Students offered agreement in the form of likes, retweet, and times two messages. They also offered advice, suggesting the value of peer-to-peer -peer forums where students can share recommendations. Overall, questions with the highest response rates were those that put students first and invited their authority and personality. Wording mattered. For instance, asking students about how the library versus librarians could help them succeed elicited different numbers and types of responses, perhaps because students could better relate to the library than librarians. Regarding student success, the juxtaposition between positive, self-aware responses and feelings of discouragement and stress st stood out. The number of references to the drug Adderall particularly struck us. 
This again suggests the value of forums where students can share their feelings and learn that they're not alone. The range of our responses also stood out. Some students shared their cell phone numbers and invited new social media followers. Others championed privacy. Some responses were whimsical or sarcastic, but even from these, we often learned. The suggestion of a commuter student hotel in Hodges Library, for instance, reminded us of a specific and growing population we may not have seen in a survey. And these responses illustrate the value of cross-campus dialogue. Comments on student wellness, financial aid, study skills and relationships remind us to cultivate conversations across campus, knowing that one office or individual cannot be all things to all people. Although I'm still not quite sure who to contact with the request for a beer volcano. <laughs> also of note are differences between campuses. Richmond's responses tended to be literal and academically oriented, while UT students brought up external events. We wonder whether a smaller campus size and more homogenous student population led to a lack of comfort in responding, particularly for marginalized communities. Ethnography is always local. This quote resonated. In a sense, our project serves as a time capsule, chronicling reactions to events on and beyond campus. We wonder how it would change if we conducted it in different semesters or additional spaces in schools. A dry erase board can serve as a, a tool to assess, illuminate, and archive students' experiences. As faculty, we often only see a small part of these experiences in our day-to-day -day interactions. We hope this project provides an opportunity to pause and consider the wider context in which our students study, learn, and live. Thank you.